because there's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who walk every day in the Spirit of the Lord. For the love, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free, has made us free from the law of sin and death. For as many as are called by the Spirit of the Lord, they shall be the sons of God, Mel, according to his word, Miss Connie and Pastor Jack, because there's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who walk every day in the Lord. Well, welcome to y'all on this July 22nd. And that is what we're about, to be able to walk today in Christ Jesus. Not according to the world, but against it. Walking upwards, right? Upwards to Zion. We are walking unto Zion. Miss Kathy and Miss Joy, welcome. And so on this day, we will be reading from 2nd Divre Hayamin. Woo, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Divre Hayamin, 2nd Chronicles, chapter 6. And we will pick up with verse 12. 2nd Chronicles, chapter 6, verse 12. Divre Hayamin. Good morning, Miss Melissa. Good to see you there. And right off the bat, so I don't forget, check out Kathy's graphics. They are so wonderful about this whole section, the temple and Solomon's reign and everything that's going on. Check it out. Furthermore, pray for YouTube. Pray for YouTube. I went there, said I was there, clicked like, I wish all of you would do that just as a test for us. And it registers that zero people came. <laughs> so we need a little prayer there, right? All right, let's begin. Then Shlomo Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Oh, here we go. For Solomon had made a bronze platform, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court, and he stood on it. He knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel, and he spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before me. And now, O oh Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built, yet Regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O oh Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer 
which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be open toward this temple day and night, toward the place where you said you would put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place and when you hear, forgive. If anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. Or if your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you and return and confess your name and pray and make supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back <clears throat> to the land which you gave to them and their fathers. And we are seeing today those words come to pass, aren't we? He's bringing them back by the hundreds. While I've stopped, good morning, Miss Kathy and Anne Marie. So nice to see you sisters' names. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk. And send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance, when there is famine in the land, pestilence, or blight, or mildew, locusts, or grasshoppers, when their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever plague, can we all say virus, which is too good a word, Disgusting disease is what it is. Whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, we're praying this right along with Solomon, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people, Israel and America and the rest of the world, when each one knows his own burden in his own grief and spreads out his hands to this temple then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways whose heart you know for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray, in this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name 
and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple, which I have built, is called by your name. And now we are the temples, each individual of his presence. We have asked him in of his glory, of his anointing, of his calling. We pray from these temples. Miss Ellen, Miss Luann, Stoney, we are praying fervently, aren't we? When your people go to battle against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to you toward this city, which you have chosen, and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there's no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy and they take them captive to a land far or near, yet when they come to themselves, when they come to themselves, in the land where they were carried captive and repent and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, we have sinned, we have done wrong, and have committed wickedness. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive and pray toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and toward the temple which I have built for your name, then hear, hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have I ask for a good connection. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. And let your saints rejoice in goodness. Oh, Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant, David. And we move right along to chapter 7 of Divrei HaYamin, Second Chronicles. When Solomon had finished praying, Fire! Got that? Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls. Can you even picture that? 
22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God, and the priests attended to their services. The Levites also with instruments of the music of the Lord, which King David had made to praise the Lord, saying, For his mercy endures forever. Whenever David offered praise by their ministry, the priests sounded trumpets opposite them while all Israel stood. Furthermore, Shlomo, Solomon, consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar which Shlomo had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat. I guess not. 120,000 sheep, 2,000 bulls, 22,000 bulls. At that time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly from the entrance of Hamas to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day, they held a sacred assembly, for they observed the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And don't you imagine it took seven days for all those offerings. On the 23rd day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Shlomo, and for his people Israel. And thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. And then, as, as, as if that wasn't enough, Miss Connie, the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. And here you go. We know these words very, very, very plainly, but for a long time, we have not included verse 13. Let's read it again, because this is the condition. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, which is happening right where I go with the Pocot people. I mean, trees are covered with locusts destroying or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if, if my people, not the unbeliever, my people, the church, mm, that I could open every door, that we all go in by faith, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Oh, precious God, precious God.
we say those words of yours. This is your word. Cause us to have true repentive hearts, Lord. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. And it's still there, even though bad things happen and the temple got destroyed. As for you, God says directly to Solomon, and I believe he says it directly to every one of us. Miss Yolinda, as for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I covenanted with David, your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. But, but, B-U-T, but, if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods, football, baseball, golf, fill in the blank, and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight. And will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by, it will be, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, why has the Lord done thus to this land and this house? And then they will answer, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. We can't get away from these words. This is the truth. We move right along to chapter 8. It came to pass at the end of 20 years when Solomon had built the house of the Lord and his own house that the cities which Hiram had given to Shlomo, Shlomo built them and he settled the children of Israel there. And Shlomo went to Hamat Sobach and seized it. He also built Tadmor in the wilderness and all the storage cities which he built in Hamat. He built upper Beit Horan and lower Beit Horan, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars, also Baalah, and all the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the chariot cities, and the cities of the cavalry, and all that Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left of the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites, who were not of Israel, that is, their descendants who were left in the land after them, whom the children of Israel did not destroy. From these, 
Solomon raised forced labor as it is to this day. But Solomon did not make the children of Israel servants for his work. Some were men of war, captains of his officers, captains of his chariots and his cavalry, and others were chiefs of the officials of King Solomon, 250 who ruled over the people. Wow. And as if that weren't enough, and it is, we get more. We get to move along to the New Testament and read Romans chapter 7. Romans 7. Oh, hot and heavy instruction. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. Oh, isn't it aggravating? But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin. Sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring, warring against the law of my mind. There's the battle, right? Got that? I mean, we all, we all, we all know that. That's the battle. Satan tries to sow a little thought, then he breathes on it if we let him. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Chapter 8. There's good news because there's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who walk every day in the Spirit of the Lord. For the law of the Spirit of Christ in Christ Jesus has made me free, has made you free. From the law of sin and death, for as many as are caught by the Spirit of the Lord, they shall be the sons of God, according to his word. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh 
that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Jeffrey, according to the spirit, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Very simple. Every morning we awake by God's grace, and as soon as we awake, and then further when we put our feet on the floor, what mindset are we? Of the flesh or in the spirit? We're free to decide. All right. We move right along to Psalm 18. Oh, Psalm 18. This is so precious. Another Psalm of David the servant of the Lord who spoke to the word, the Lord, the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. This is what he said and sang in Psalm 18. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. And then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. What would we do if suddenly we looked up and it was raining coals of fire, setting fires everywhere? He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. And then the channels of the sea were seen. 
The foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. God. He's a big God. The breath from his nostrils are a blast. We wrap up today's awesome, awesome scriptures. Awesome. I'll let them blow you away. So much so that the, the cares of this earth just seem like nothing. Because our God is seated on his throne. He is in charge. He knows everything. He knows every thought. He's counted all the hairs on the head. The head of the righteous and the heads of the sinners. He knows. Let's exalt him. Let's pray. Let's get serious. We are his kingdom now on earth. Let's get very serious. A lazy man buries his hand in the bowl. What a disgusting sight that sim that is, right? I'm picturing that. I can't stand the thought of that. Get your hand out of the bowl, you lazy thing. And will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Now, I'll tell you what, that is ultimate lazy. Strike a scoffer, and the simple will become wary. Rebuke one who has understanding and he will discern knowledge. Right? Total opposite reactions. Total, total opposite. Oh. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful? He's given us this word. My little ministry, KVC, has dedicated this year, 2020, to sending as many Bibles, paying for we pay for them over there. We don't we don't go through any costs from here. We pay for them over there and they're shipped up there to the desert and they, they're handing them out. And uh, I'd ask you to pray, and perhaps you'd like to contribute some to that. Time is getting short, and we feel an urgency to get this word that we just read, that we have in our hands. We've got other Bibles on shelves. We ought to give them all away to somebody. Let's pray that everyone has their chance to hear the word of God, that they don't slip into eternity, that we neglect it to get the word of God to them. Oh, Father, we come to you in prayer and we thank you and we bless you for your precious word. It is our extreme joy and privilege to have your word and to read it and to just Feel our spirits and our souls just filling up. Just, just getting fed and nourished. We feel nourished, Lord. And there's something about knowing that we are gathered together. That is such precious fellowship, even though we aren't in the same, under the same roof. Father, we thank you. We thank you for <laughs> these marvelous phones. Good heavens. Who'd have ever thought? Who'd have ever thought? I had a call from the other side of the world the other day, and that person watches. I'm talking Russia. I marvel. The Holy Ghost will take these prayers up to the throne room. So, Father, we are privileged to hold up your Israel and your people. 
You have asked us to, Jesus. You said, please pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. And so we do, Jesus. We want to obey you. You are our precious Lord. Accomplished atonement once and for all. Gave good gifts to men. Resurrected from the dead by your Father. And so shall we be. Eternal life. Mansions in glory waiting. Oh, we've come to thank you this morning in prayer, Lord, for all of the beautiful things ahead of us as we walk along in the Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for sending Holy Spirit to us, this dearest, dearest of friends who lives in us, who walks with us, who helps us, guides us, comforts us, Oh, we pray for the enemies, Lord. We pray for all who are just filled with hate and violence and they are kicking up a storm. It's hard for them to kick against the pricks. And so, Lord, we hold them up to you in prayer. We were once disobedient. We were once lost. Lost. And you saved us. At the exact time you had reserved and so Lord we hold them all up to you and we say Lord please please send out Holy Spirit to draw them today we don't want to know any of them are gonna go to hell we don't know we don't want to know any of them are gonna live one more day miserably lost Lord, we hold them up to you. Everyone, from ruler down to the lowliest, from, from people who are well down to those, Lord, who they'll die today if we don't pray for them. We pray for them. If they haven't heard, Lord, revive them. Please, revive them. Send a believer to them to, to risk with joy and with boldness to give them the gospel, the gospel of our precious Lord and Savior and Deliverer, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is who we mean. Oh Lord, take this little live recording everywhere. Take it wherever, I mean, we send it out, you are the Lord. But we pray, anyone listening this morning, if you've listened and you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal savior, it's not hard. You just need to humble your heart, your mind. You need to recognize that you don't have him and by faith believe that he is the way. He's the way to heaven. He's the only way. No other God, no other God can do that. Jesus is the only son of the only living heavenly Father God who made you and me and this earth. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Please, let this day be the most wonderful day of your life for making this decision. Please, please, bow your head and say, Dear Father in Heaven, I come to you today a sinner without you and I need you, and I want you. Please, Lord Jesus, show me that you're real. I, I need you to show me. Please, I give you my sins. I give you my life. 
and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to deliver me from these bondages that hold me. I ask you, Lord, to wash me with your precious blood that you shed on Calvary. I invite you into my heart and my life. Please show me that you're real and turn me around. Amen and amen. And we are believing with you if you did that. It would be wonderful if you put that down there. Send a little note. Because if you confess with your mouth, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. It's important. It's not a secret. You're a new person now today. You're brand new. Brand new. Tell it. Tell somebody you can trust. Share it. Tell us. We'll pray for you. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen. Have a beautiful day in him. Bye-bye.